There's a skill out there more important than reading or math. By the time a child is five years old, this skill predicts their health, wealth, and love well into adulthood. This skill is called emotional regulation. Emotional regulation is the ability to not act impulsively. It's the ability to take on challenge and gracefully deal with life's ups and downs. Emotional regulation is learnable. What I want to do is, you know, think about how kids learn emotional regulation now. You know, kids who struggle, they do get support. And it often comes from specialists and teachers, and they're very, very good at their jobs. But these methods, they're hard to replicate. They're one-on-one, -on -one, they take time, and they don't always meet kids at their level. So as a thought experiment, I'd like to go through with you right, what it would be like to teach kids how to ride a bike the same way we teach right, emotional regulation now. So for this experiment, I'm going to give you a kid. Her name is Sally. I'm going to give you a bike. But the game is a little different here. You and Sally are going to meet in an office. This office is small. So you can't actually ride the bike inside this office. So instead, what you're going to do is you're going to talk about the bike. <laughs> you're going to read the manual for the bike. You're going to talk about what it might feel like to ride the bike. Uh, you're going to come up with strategies for riding the bike. But what you are absolutely not going to do is ride that bike. <laughs> now, time will pass, and you're going to call Sally's parents in at the end of your session. You're going to tell them, Sally did a really good job thinking about that bike. And then you're going to send them out. You're going to put them on Main Street. Main Street's pretty busy, and you're going to hope she gets home safely. This is exactly what we're doing for kids in emotional regulation right now. This is how we're talking to them. That's how we're teaching them. Um, my team started wondering, you know, how could we build a bike for emotional regulation? What would that bike look like? What would its parts be? And what we realized is that video games could be a very powerful bike for emotional regulation. So games are great. So Games give you a space to learn and explore and play. These are all the ways that kids learn. They take in the world. They build meaning for themselves. Um, it's up to us what type of learning happens in the game, whether it's good or bad. And we choose to build these games so that they are for emotional regulation. They build these important skills. So let's take a look at what that game looks like. So what you see here is you see um, a player. He's playing the game. And the first thing he's doing, he's just playing a game. But what you might notice down at the bottom, we're actually watching his heart rate. Heart rate is a proxy for his emotional state. And as he concentrates on that game, his heart rate's going to change. And as heart rate changes, what we do is we actually make the game harder. This might seem counterintuitive at first, but, it's, but what it does is it's a lot like life. So when you're in the middle of an argument, you don't get to turn out and turn away. When you're taking a test, you don't get to stop and turn away. In fact, your emotions, if you don't have control over them, they're going to make that interaction all the much harder. So what happens in this game is, as his heart rate goes up, as he concentrates and gets more involved in that game, smoke starts to fill the screen. That fruit is going to start, it's going to keep falling on it. He's not going to get to stop and withdraw from the game. The only options he has are to figure out how to get out of that thing and figure it out for himself. So what he'll do is he'll start breathing, he'll start deep breathing. His heart rate, he'll see it go down, and then he'll be able to continue on and play the game as normal. The great part about this is that it works. And to illustrate that fact, I want to introduce you to Bruin. Bruin is six years old. Bruin lives in Australia. When Bruin was three, he was nonverbal, and he was diagnosed with autism. He got a lot of early support from specialists, and he started to connect with his family. So that was good. But then Bruin, as most kids do, he kept growing. And when he was five, he was time to go to school. Now, like most kids with autism, transitions and new experiences were really hard for Bruin. He found himself unable to gain his composure when things weren't going his way or something new was happening. And he was spending a lot of time in the principal's office. His parents didn't know what to do. In that context, they found us and the work that my team had been working on, and they started playing our games. So, Let's quickly step through what Bruin's journey was. First thing Bruin did, he started playing. Just like the bike, rather than sit in the room, he was able to start and look and see and experience his emotions. He was able to see that there was something there, 
and he was able, there was something changing. Because he was seeing something changing, he was able to become much more aware of what was going on. He was aware, there was a, there was a lever, there were things changing in his body as he concentrates. Uh, he was able, able to feel himself through and see that that existed. Because he had that awareness, he was now motivated for mastery. He was, able to, he was able to see what worked, take it on, and try it out in the game. Most kids know that deep breathing is a strategy that helps them navigate through challenge. But in reality, strategies can come from anywhere. So maybe Bruin has ideas. Maybe he feels something in his body. Maybe, uh, maybe his parents have ideas. Maybe his teachers have idea. The reality is he now has a playground. He has a place where he can ride that bike and see where he can balance himself and where he can't balance himself. Because he's able to do this, he's now able to take on more and more challenge. So he now is motivated both in and out of the game to see how far he can go. For Bruin, the changes outside of the game were remarkable. So he started doing a lot better at school. He started doing a lot better at home. He started bringing the words from the games into his interactions, and he started doing much, much better. For me, I was amazed through an interaction. We were able to impact a family an ocean away. So Bruin is just one kid, and right now we've reached about 500 more Bruins. We've also run clinical trials to try to establish you know, what is working and what's not working uh, as we build these tools. And three results have really stood out to me. So the first is a decrease in disruptive behaviors. So kids who play these games, they are less impulsive, and they're able to navigate themselves out of trouble more often. Second is an increase in emotional regulation. So these kids have more awareness of themselves and more strategy when things are different and new to pull themselves back, to get back in. And finally is a decrease in parent stress. It's very important for me that these kids don't just build skills inside of video games. These kids have to, and they are. They're taking these skills into their home and into their school, and they're making real progress. It's not lost on me that the world is an increasingly angry place. Our leaders now, they're interacting and talking with each other through anger. Now, more than ever, we need to make emotional regulation and emotional strength a priority. We need kids like Bruin to lead the way. I'm proud that we can be a force for good. Thank you.